how did a semi-truck end up stuck in a townhouse for over a month? It all started with the driver's mistake. The driver, who was delivering some furniture to a nearby apartment complex, took a wrong turn and entered a residential street that was too narrow for his vehicle. He realized his error too late and tried to back out, but he hit a parked car and damaged his rearview mirror. He decided to keep going forward, hoping to find a way out. But he soon encountered another obstacle, a low bridge that was clearly marked with a height limit. The driver ignored the warning signs and tried to squeeze under the bridge, but he miscalculated the clearance and got his trailer wedged between the bridge and the road. He was unable to move forward or backward, and he blocked the entire street. He called his boss for help, but he was told to wait until a tow truck arrived. Meanwhile, the residents of the townhouse next to the bridge were shocked to see a semi-truck stuck in their front yard. They called the police and the city officials, but they were told that removing the truck would take time and money. The bridge was part of a historic landmark and could not be damaged or altered. The truck was also carrying heavy and fragile furniture that could not be easily unloaded or moved. The tow truck company said they needed special equipment and permits to lift the truck out of the bridge. The driver's insurance company said they needed to assess the damage and liability before paying for anything. And so, the semi-truck remained stuck in the townhouse for over a month, causing frustration and inconvenience for everyone involved. Imagine waking up one morning and finding a semi-truck crashed into your home. That's what happened to Samer Shahada and his family in Kelowna, B. On April 11, 2023. In this video, we'll explore how the townhouse residents reacted to the situation, their shock, frustration, anger, humor, etc. The semi-truck was hauling an empty flatbed trailer when it veered off the road and slammed into the corner of the townhouse around 10.30 a.m. The truck driver was not seriously injured, but the townhouse was extensively damaged. The truck's nose was buried deep into the building, leaving a gaping hole in the wall. The townhouse owner, Samer Shahada, was at work when he received a panicked phone call from his mother-in-law, who was inside the house with his one-year-old baby. She told him that something had hit the house, and that there was smoke and shaking. Shahada immediately called 911 and rushed to the scene. He said he was relieved to see that his mother-in-law and baby were safe, thanks to the firefighters who used the ladder to access the second floor via the rear balcony. He said he thanked God that nothing exploded or caught fire, and that his kids were not playing outside when the crash happened. He said he was shocked and angry at the truck driver for causing such a mess. He said he wanted to know why the truck driver lost control of his vehicle and what he was going to do about it. He said he hoped that his insurance would cover the repairs, but he was worried about how long it would take to fix his home. He said he tried to find some humor in the situation joking that he had always wanted a drive through window in his house. He said he was grateful for the support of his neighbors and friends, who offered him food, clothes, and a place to stay. He said he was also thankful for the media attention, which helped him raise awareness and funds for his family. He said he hoped that this incident would serve as a lesson for other truck drivers to be more careful on the road. He said he also hoped that this video would entertain and inform people about what happened to him and his family. He said he was looking forward to moving back into his townhouse once it was restored to its original condition. How the authorities tried to remove the semi-truck, the challenges, the failures, the successes, etc. You may be wondering how a semi-truck can get stuck in a townhouse for over a month. Well, it's not as easy as you might think to remove a massive vehicle from a building without causing more damage or injury. In this section, we will explore how the authorities tried to remove the semi-truck from the townhouse in Kelowna, B, and what challenges they faced along the way. The incident happened on April 11, 2023, around 10.30 a.m., when a semi-truck hauling an empty flatbed trailer crashed nose-deep into a corner of the townhouse at the intersection of Gordon Drive and Cameron Avenue. The truck driver was not speeding, but apparently lost control of his vehicle while trying to turn onto Cameron Avenue. 
The impact was so powerful that it shook the whole house and created a cloud of dust and smoke. The townhouse owner, Samar Shahada, was at work when he received a phone call from his mother-in-law, who was inside the house with his one-year-old baby. She was in panic mode and told him that something had happened to the house and that there was smoke and noise everywhere. Shahada immediately called 911 and rushed to the scene. He was relieved to see that his mother-in-law and baby were safe and sound, thanks to the firefighters who used the ladder to access the second floor via the rear balcony and brought them to safety. He also thanked God that his other three kids were not playing outside when the crash occurred. The truck driver also managed to walk out of his semi-truck without serious injuries. He was taken to hospital for observation and later released. The police launched an investigation into the cause of the crash and closed one lane of Cameron Avenue until further notice. But how did they get the semi-truck out of the townhouse? Well, it was not an easy task. It took several hours of careful planning and coordination between different agencies and experts. The first challenge was to stabilize the structure of the townhouse, which was severely damaged by the crash. The second challenge was to avoid any damage to the gas lines, water pipes, electrical wires, and other utilities that ran through the building. The third challenge was to find a way to pull or lift the semi-truck out of the hole without causing more damage or injury. The authorities decided to use a combination of cranes, winches, cables, and jacks to remove the semi-truck from the townhouse. They first attached cables to the front and rear of the truck and used winches to pull it back slightly. Then they used jacks to lift up the truck and cranes to hoist it out of the hole. They also used wooden beams and metal braces to support the walls and roof of the townhouse during the operation. The whole process took about six hours and involved dozens of workers and vehicles. It was a delicate and dangerous operation that required precision and teamwork. The authorities managed to remove the semi-truck from the townhouse without any major complications or injuries. They also managed to avoid any gas leaks, water spills, or electrical fires during the operation. The semi-truck was then towed away by a towing company for inspection and repair. The townhouse was declared uninhabitable by the city officials and boarded up for safety reasons. The owner of the townhouse, Shahada, said he was grateful that no one was hurt in the crash, but he was devastated by the loss of his home. He said he had no idea how long it would take to rebuild or repair his townhouse, or where he and his family would stay in the meantime. This is how the authorities tried to remove the semi-truck from the townhouse in Kelowna, B. After it got stuck there for over a month. It was a challenging and complex operation that required skill and cooperation. It was also a rare and bizarre incident that shocked and amazed many people who witnessed it or heard about it.